Now, I had filmed a bunch of these that may or may not go live ever because I was filming them in advance of my vacation. And I was saving some of them up because I thought they made interesting topics. And then it came out that not everything you say about Blizzard uh, sounds the same in the light of recent recent news breaking. And so having something that is uh, old can be incredibly outdated. So with that in mind, let's see what the lessons of WoW of today, August 18th, when I'm recording this, could learn from Final Fantasy XIV. Of course, alt means more in playing of the game, especially with the covenants and all of that stuff. So, you know, I understand they, they see this problem, they go to fix the problem, but it's like you can fix the problem, but also kind of hurt yourself and not pe make people happy. And I think that's what happened. It's extremely tone deaf because you think of what they could do. Like not even just the the obvious ones of we'll let you have it for a day or we'll let you have it for a week. Don't go too crazy. They could properly just go, this is now the, this is now the standard or, you know, now you, you can buy an XP bonus for time walking badges that are only active during time walking week or during time walking whatever. Maybe that's a like a 20% XP bonus that's Whoa. active all the Whoa. time or active only in time walking dungeons. <laughs> oh, stop you with this, these ideas, these ideas. <laughs> you get, oh. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the stuff where it's like you could you could make this fun. You could make this interesting. You could make this engaging. I mean, I, I do think that if WoW wants to lean into this kind of speed leveling aspect of it, you could. You could turn it into a very Diablo-esque way of handling things where you you power level people and you could gamify that. You could absolutely put systems like Time Walking, which is the closest thing they have to sync roulettes. Uh, they are these, seer, these timed events, kind of like Unreal, where you go back and you you play through old dungeons, but it's not done in a way that's true to those dungeons then, it's not done in a way that's true to dungeons now. Uh, you bring your current abilities with you, but you're scaled down, and it, it just everything is weird about the way it's done. And in trade, you get these badges that allow you to buy cool stuff, and we have heirloom sets, and we have all this... Bleh. I could see time walking being so much more. Now, time walking was in the game long before Chromie Time, which is now the ability to basically go back and do Final Fantasy's New Game Plus system through an expansion of your choosing as a way of leveling uh, one of your other classes, an alt class. And, you know, I think when you pair those things, you've got the fragments of something that could be really great. Uh, as it sits today, though, World of Warcraft just hasn't done any of that. Like, Honestly, if you if you actually took the time to could think about players, communicate with players, or speak to them, you'd probably learn that if leveling 50 to 60 took half as long, you'd have twice as many people, you know, well, not twice as many people playing the fucking game. You'd have people play you'd have some people playing the game for twice as long. You have more If you stuff. put in Covenant campaign skips, you would get more people playing the game. Yeah. I would be playing a couple of vaults just for like hugging raids and stuff whenever I've fuck all else going on. If I could just go, okay, here's this character, I can just worry about- I mean, I think replayability is one of the things that MMORPGs really struggle to balance because if you make it too powerful, it becomes a requirement, right? If you make it too powerful, then when you meet somebody in the game, they get their first character to cap and somebody's immediate response is, well, you gotta level this other class. You gotta do this other thing. Like you're getting one character to cap is not even the opening of the end game. It's the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. And so you, you got to be careful making that too powerful where you end up with people with stables of alts having this enormous advantage over people who their only thing they're doing wrong is that they want to care about and be complete in covering one character. And I, and I don't think that should be seen as a mistake. Um, on the other side of things, if you don't allow for replayability, then you are spending all this time making all of this content, especially when you talk about things like covenants, where you are designed to choose one of four paths, and you're giving people no reason to keep playing after they've completed their one single kind of playthrough of the game. So I, I do think that WoW has an enormous amount of content among the MMO genre that if they could be better about leveraging old content, there is a ton of fun things they should do. Classic is a perfect example. Look at that. They relaunched old version, an old version of their game, and it brought in all these people. Why is retail not doing things that encourages going back and re-enjoying the game in a new and different way? when they're struggling to keep up with their current systems and they're having to put all this retention in just for the sake of retention, 
that is something that you do because you're afraid people would leave if they see that there's no material. But there is material. There is something to be leveraged. And so it's incredibly frustrating that a game that has this much content in it is behaving as if they're afraid that we might look up and realize there's not content. There's a ton in here. There's just no reason to do the vast majority of it. But gear. But I have to worry about every other system in the game. And I log in and go, nope. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, and uh, Shadowbreakers in Endwalker? Why do you think I've played so much of it? Yeah, so, so the reason I bring this up is because uh, that is a game you can entirely play on one character, and you can play all of the different jobs, but also all of the different, like, job quests. Right. It does encourage replayability. I am, you know, I have, I have, we looked at it today, I have 3,000 hours on my character. Uh, I know there's many people with a lot more than me. Uh, there's many people with less than me. Uh, so I know I'm kind of middle of the pack. And with 3,000 hours played in Final Fantasy XIV, I have an enormous number of what I would consider mainline features that I really haven't done a lot of. In some cases, I've done very little of. Uh, and so it it is easy to jump into those things because I can do them. I can do some of them literally while I'm in queue for something. I can do them while I'm all on my one character, and so it doesn't have the abrasiveness of having to log out, go to character select, and start this journey on a new character. And that's something where I think like time walking really shines. It's something where I think Guild Wars actually handles having true alts a little bit better than World of Warcraft in that when I'm on my main, I'm getting uh, items that help me power level alts and things like that, much more stronger than an heirloom system, so that if I want a PvP on the class I enjoy, but then I have another class that I'd like to have leveled for raiding eventually, I don't have to choose between those two things. It does feel very weird that maybe for uh, this week, for you to have the best loot you can for your raid group, uh, that you're PvPing on the class that you raid on, even though you really enjoy PvP on a different class in World of Warcraft, as opposed to Final Fantasy, like with the current Relic Grind, which is the legendary system inside Final Fantasy XIV, if I have a second class that is level 71 or above, I can gain experience while being in the, in the Relic Zone, kind of the Maw for World of Warcraft players, and I can be in the Maw leveling up as my other class and I still get the drops that I need to continue crafting the relic on a class of my choosing and so I don't have to be on my main only progressing my my item level or be on my alt only progressing my experience I can do both at the same time and being those are the three MMOs that I'm really playing right now uh, not playing WoW right now but like those are the three games that I'm aware of right now it feels very bizarre to me that World of Warcraft being the biggest and most funded and having more content than either Final Fantasy or Guild Wars in just total longevity of the game uh, feels weird that it has the least replayability out of the three. Uh, it feels weird to me that it is the hardest to feel like I'm getting that double and triple dip where I'm progressing towards that goal I have with my friends, I'm progressing towards that goal I have for myself, and then I'm accidentally progressing towards an area that's going to cause me to grow and engage differently as a gamer than I would have on my own because I might as well. I'm already getting these other two things done. And uh, what is... Because it's that thing. I, I'm generally quite reluctant to just say make leveling super fast for everyone all the time and, and stuff like that because yeah, I, in the past i was always in the camp of no leveling should be paced like wrath of the lich king faster than tbc but not blazingly fast because you know what it took me a decent whack of time to go through that wrath leveling and nope. i remember i was done like day one it was, it was so fast Appreciating it, enjoying it, spending a lot of time in those zones. I was going about my business versus the more smooth. Had I not had an exam that day, I would have been in the running for server first or at least server first on my class. Streamlined and fast experience of today. Um, so I'm generally not pro zoom, 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 zoom uh, at all games. What I think FF14 has been able to do, though, is actually get both in a weird way because at, le at least or at least that's just how it plays in my psychology and this it's going to give me brain worms that's going to slow me down as i progress through ff14 because i probably want to play there's a few things this dancer looks really cool samurai looks really cool dark knight i need to do for the story of course i will say this is very common 
Um, the danger of this is what can happen. It doesn't mean it will happen. What can happen when somebody who self-admittedly does not have an immense amount of, like, an unfathomable amount of free time to play video games, uh, because they're busy doing things that are not video games, or they're playing other video games, is what can happen is they do... Like right now, I have a bunch of jobs that I've never leveled that I'm pushing through the 30s. And so right now, the most optimal dungeon I can run is Brave Longstop. Long Stop. And what I could do is I could run Brave Longstop Long Stop 57 billion times, and all of them would make it to level 35, and then I could run the next dungeon, and then the next dungeon, and I could just do that. And I could experience them all, and I could take breaks and do their job quests. But what can happen is, A, you're doing the oldest content, which means that even if it was the same developer working on that content, that person's gotten better. And so you're missing out on the end game, especially if you have not progressed a main to that point. Um, but also, you can suddenly look up and say, I'm really bored, this game feels really stale, it feels like the content's out of date, because it is. You're doing out of date content and you're doing it repeatedly. So when you get distracted, getting bogged down in all the side content, um, what can happen is people are like, well, I put a thousand hours in, the game really wasn't for me, and I quit. And then you go look at their search profile, and they don't have a single character above level 40. Their MSQ has only progressed to, you know, level 35. They've only done a handful of the side systems. And they never really got to taste the game in its entirety. And so what that... What I would recommend is to view this game as a theme park, and in some theme parks there's a monorail, and the monorail or the tour bus in a new city for the first time, you get on it and, and you stay on it, and you get to see a general picture of everything, and you look out this side of the monorail and it's beautiful, and you look out this side of the monorail and it's beautiful, oh my gosh, I want to see that one day. Stay on the monorail. The monorail is your main scenario quest and your class quest for your main. Stay on that monorail as much as possible. It does make pit stops if you need to get off and stretch your legs, just like those buses. You can hop back on at any time, but if you go get lost there, there is a ton of content in this game that will never ever be unlocked to you. You will never experience, and the newest content, the things that you're seeing in the advertisements on Twitch streams and YouTube videos, you're hearing friends and family rant and rave about, is at the end of that monorail in many, many cases. And so what I encourage you to do is as much as possible, don't do it to the point that you hate the game, but as much as possible, if it's all the same to you, stay on the monorail, stay on one class, get all the way to the end of that tour, get to the end of the line. When you get to the end of the line, I will tell you the doors open and they tell you, okay, now go do whatever you want. And so when people say, what should I do now that I've made it to cap? Well, if you wanna push your item level up, here's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to go experience crafting and gathering, here's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to try alternate jobs, here's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to go try exploring the open world, here's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to try side content, here's a couple of ways you can do that. And so it becomes this weird, what should I do? I just hit level 80 and it becomes, well, what do you want to do? Which is so bizarre because you've been on these tracks this whole time. And so you play some number of hundreds of hours if you've taken it seriously and you've made it all the way to cap and you've been told you need to do step one and then step two and then step three and then step four and then you get to the end and you're like okay what's the next step and it immediately opens up and so i would just say be very very careful trying to do everything you one day want to do prior to getting caught up um but leveling a job really quick Zoom, 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 zoom. Your whole character moving through everything is a lot slower. So it's that weird thing in World of Warcraft where, you know, what, what you're doing in your single FF character, I'm in my head making that analogous to your account-wide progress in World of Warcraft. Even though, you know, if you made a second character in FF, it wouldn't be like that. It's just you don't need to make a second character in FF and the way that you do it in WoW. So there's that bit of me that's just kind of thinking, like, would it be better if everything was, like, just tune, you know, way more, I guess, slow as an overall experience as you progress your account. But the, the individual things you do, like leveling up a class, like those things are fast. I think that promotes this feeling of, uh, well, freedom. This kind of like, oh, look at all these possibilities. I'm going to go for them. Which is what people, I think, get excited about when they see an XP in balance situation like that. So if I was to say anything here, I think it's perhaps a, a bit of a wake up call that 
we should make some sort of account-wide progress system beyond achievements in World of Warcraft. I think it should be thematic. It should be fantasy-driven. And they've moved that way slowly, right? You unlock flying as account-wide. There, there are certain aspects of reputations and things like that. So, you know, they, they've definitely moved in that direction. I do think that as they talk about chromey time, as they talk about getting to expansions where we look back uh, over all the previous expansions, um, WoW has an opportunity to sit and say, okay, let's start to make more things account-wide. Let's start to let you leverage cross professions across multiple classes. Let's let you start to leverage the fact that you've done something before um, to speed it up the next time or to make it different. Uh, what is neat about the Covenant system on its own is that much like the Grand Company system in Final Fantasy, um, it is this set of quests that tells you a story and you can go progress through another one and it's similar but different. And so there's an opportunity there to say, okay, if I complete all four covenants, is there a fifth covenant? If I can, you know, and am I encouraged to do those four on four different characters? And, and so opening up things, you know, I think the allied race requirements was in the right vein, but not requirements for the sake of requirements, but requirements for, for a logical form of progression. Um, you've done a lot of this. Now can you do it harder? Now can you do it faster? Now can you do this thing at a higher level? And so, you know, I think challenge mode dungeons was a really uh, clever way to, to leverage dungeons. Mage Tower was a clever way to leverage classes. And so finding some way to leverage your account-wide progression that just lets players do something for the sake of it, for the sake of challenge, and then cuts the bull crap out of the way. If there's a tutorial to Torghast, don't make me do that more than once. Uh, don't, you know, and so that 30 minute Ma introduction on every single character, it's, it's frustrating and it's incredibly frustrating. And then people say it doesn't mean much until you realize that there's somebody who said, you know, I think I want to level every class in the game. It's like, oh, well, and I'd like to have two or three druids. And, you know, I actually, I, I want to have uh, a mage on Alliance and Horde. And all of a sudden you realize you've got eight and 10 hours of playtime that's just BS. And you're just slow walking to put a helm in today. It's just, it sucks so bad. Um, and every moment of that is a moment to say, well, can I go play something else? And when you log into Final Fantasy, it doesn't ask you to do any of that. As a matter of fact, for a number of years, that was the biggest complaint is I want to slow walk the helmet and there was no way to do that. So they had to add in a mode that does not grant experience that allows you to replay things like the Maw introduction, because once you did it once, it was just done. And so you actually end up with players requesting to get to do it again, which is a much healthier place to be than saying, hey, I got ahead of your request to do it when you want to, and I'm just going to make you do it even after you've begged me to stop. Uh, and so I, I think that's something that they've got to get better at. Um, Final Fantasy is not perfect at it, so we're not asking you to shoot the moon here. Final Fantasy still has um, various aspects, but it's doing it a lot better than WoW like say the legacy system of SWOTOR and there should be a, a sort of thing going on where, you know, if I cap a currency in my main, maybe VP, it's a boost to my ult, like there was a Mr. Pandaria. Same goes for a reputation, but with reps, of course, making it. And and to do this, they may have to remove the token. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I personally don't think the token's the end of the game. I think that it, it gets gold sellers um, to have a little harder time, but you do start to have people optimize it for money making or you have to start having money making be a thing that people progress for the sake of progressing um, want to buy golds put out a number of videos on optional systems they could do to start to make money a bottomless pit uh so that buying gold tokens is not as uh it's not the only exclusive use it can't be the be all end all it's like no if i have if i make a pile of gold i can also use that to make more gold and so um you know getting that to where people want to dump it into a cosmetic system of some kind that helps that become a wheel kind of like item levels where it progresses in some way um it, it you've got to do something so that players want to keep playing your game uh and that can be as simple as imagine if i do um the same quest on different jobs and there's different text do they talk differently to a rogue than they do to a mage? Do they talk differently to a tauren than they do to an orc? Uh, and so if you're not going to add flavor, if you're not going to add a reason to go back and explore, going on Guild Wars 
I feel differently being on a dungeon that is around a different character. When I go with a friend and it's about a char, like I see their character in some of the cutscenes because they're talking to a char and I'm not a char. And so it feels like there are missed opportunities regularly. And that's really hard to see from the game that in theory has the most resources. Uh, and so when you see Final Fantasy just doing it better, uh, in so many ways it's it's not a question of like oh well they beat you because no they beat you because they tried that's it they they didn't they didn't have to cut a corner they didn't have to cheat they didn't have to bribe a judge they beat you because they tried and it just sometimes feels like and it doesn't mean they don't but it feels like the feeling is that world of warcraft doesn't try so the most of that is account wide it's tricky. I mean, if you could just play every single class on one character, you could easily see the FF stuff transplanting into WoW in a successful enough way, actually. Yeah. Um, but I think something like that, so that when you get your main up, maybe you then have a way to get XP, uh, you know, potions or something. Because there used to be XP potions in World of Warcraft for various... Honestly, I, I think what he's describing is Guild Wars. Um, you get these tomes that just grant levels to your alts, uh, once an alt makes it to 80, it's always level 80. All content's level 80, so much like they've reduced this down to 60. Um, and your currencies and things like that are all shared. You have a shared bank inventory that you can share resources across. So when I craft, I can craft and kind of put things in there and I can process across multiple characters. There's a reason to have multiple characters to make my legendaries. I'm going to want a second character so that I can have multiple crafting professions available to me. Um, and it is designed to have multiple playthroughs and multiple characters and i get to skip any of the parts i want to skip and i get to replay any of the parts i want to replay and it replayability is baked in from the very get-go um, in a way that's much closer to what wow would need to do than try to import final fantasy system which is just different it's different things i remember it was like crawl the blade called the okay i remember the npc name wow that just appeared in my head um you know you, you'd be grinding him all the time wouldn't you in um uh in the, the 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 middle of Pandaria at the wall, he was over there. Your man, anyway, for the XP potion or the Christmas event for the XP potion. Then they removed all those things from the game. Like, why can my main not earn an XP potion that can go down to an alt? So you know, with this, it's like they should have nerfed this, but they should have let it be higher in terms of XP than it was beforehand, and they probably also should have buffed. Uh, most XP sources in Threads of Fate. Yeah. Um, Threads of Fate I was so excited about, and it turned out to be utter garbage. I mean, that's more than anything else. That's what I'm kind of thinking here. This feels like all of the symptoms of a group of developers who do not have the time or the freedom to do things that will be good for the game that aren't part of a big plan, part of a big track. Because the correct, well, I mean, it's, very, it's a lot for me to say the correct. But what I think a lot of people would enjoy is if they looked and went, okay, what is the response here? Mm. The response to this XP bug is positive. People want to play. They could probably look at engagement and see some numbers went up. And then they go, okay, why was that? Let's have a think. People like I more XP. And then if you, if you don't, like I did sitting here, if they had the time and the patience, not the patience, that's not the wrong word, the time and like the freedom, to sit down and just go, okay, how do we make use of this? Because this is clearly an improvement in how our players feel. How can we actually, you know, go forward with that? Even if that's as much as you can fucking spend anima to buy XP pots for alts that work from 50 to 60, like 20%, 30% XP, go for it. Just anything that feels actually part of the game something to engage players to give them that bonus something to feel good but that's the thing where i feel like the developers just don't have like they clearly don't have the capability to do this and obviously like this isn't like some big brain game design stuff this is simple logic looking at things which implies that it's not that they can't do it actual like competency wise mm -hmm. but production wise they can't do it that's what it feels to me yeah so there's no other reason they can take a number down by you know more than half instantly, but they can't fix other problems for weeks or months. That's what it comes across to me. Like it's, it's grim that I'm looking at this thing and just thinking, well, this is emblematic of so many problems, but I really feel it. I 
as somebody that plays Final Fantasy, I would think that I, I think that Matt's being a little unfair. Um, there are times that something looks like a big deal and they seem to just flip a switch. And there are times that we ask for something that seems like it's no big deal and they tell us that it takes weeks or months or it's not possible. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that World of Warcraft is, you know, um, is, is not, I, I wouldn't put it that simple because Final Fantasy has those issues. Uh, both games have things that we think, well, why don't they just do this? And like, there's clearly a reason. Um, I think the difference is that Final Fantasy comes out and tells us. Final Fantasy comes out and says, hey, I heard you want to do this. I've heard these are the following suggestions. These are the other things that we've looked at. And unfortunately, due to the following reasons, this is the set of options available to us, which sometimes is nothing. Sometimes it's we'll get back to if we find something else. Uh, and so I, I think communication is the key there. The fact that he's speculating that they don't want to do it. And there's there's no clip that I can go say, OK, well, let's go pull this clip and show why he's wrong. And so instead we have to go, well, he might be right. And so I, I think the fact that we can let speculation run rampant when something like that is said does a lot of damage to World of Warcraft. Um, does a lot of damage to World of Warcraft as opposed to Final Fantasy when people go out and say things like that, the fans are more than quick to go, actually, Yoshi P has corrected that on this date, this date, this date, and this date. And so that just stops it right there. So it doesn't get legs and become this like massive, massive accusation of not giving a crap. I really feel it. Uh, it speaks a lot deeper than you'd imagine at first glance. Yeah. I like from their perspective, it's just, oh, there's a bug in the game, yep, fix the bug. Yep, On to the yep. next ticket. Yep. But if they had the time, yep. if, they had, if they could sit down and go, fuck yeah, actually, that's a bit interesting. Huh. Then you'd, you know, you maybe yeah. have something. So for other things going on in World of Warcraft, Dark Moon Fair, by the way, 10% doesn't work for the Archivist Codex. Yep. Which, I mean, would make sense because then people would try to stockpile and then only do the turn in when they get the 10%. Yep. So uh, anyway, right, there's that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think lessons WoW could learn from 14. I, I feel like a lot of times I find that I listen to this and I say, it comes down to communication. You don't have to be better than them, but you do have to be on the same team as your fans. Uh, you cannot act like, okay, the drawbridge is up, keep them on that side of the moat, I don't want to engage with them. You've got to be in there with your fans. And I understand some of the fans, you know, they push back, they say mean things, right? You're, you're, you're rubbing elbows with, with people that maybe think differently than you, that look differently than you, that sound differently than you, that, you know, they, they eat weird food. They I get it. I get it. You're around people that are different than you and it makes you uncomfortable. I understand that when they have come out in the past, Blizzard has been around people and rubbing elbows with people who have, have called them names, have mocked them, have accused them of, of terrible things. And the natural tendency is get back into the castle, push the fans out on the field and raise the bridge. Um, but the difference here, the difference when things start to get tough uh is when it gets tough and you're in there with your fans they're fighting along with you and so final fantasy yes there is friction between the fans and the devs sometimes there are accusations that there's just morons at the helm or whatever it happens but instead of hiding they engage with those people and as a result um it doesn't get worse than that. It doesn't spiral into something. And as a result, when there is a delay in content or there is a server crash or there is uh, a mishandled piece of content, uh, people are, are a little more patient to say, hey, here's my feedback. I know you're gonna fix it. I'll wait. And so that's, that's very different than this is just so like you. A uh, piece of junk content from a piece of junk person. And let me just shout at you forever. Uh, and so it, it it really just comes down to having that relationship. Uh, and instead of saying, you think you want something, but you definitely for sure don't, you moron, uh, which is often what the wow response feels like. He says, you know, that's that's a neat idea. Or I can understand why you know you want that. I haven't thought about that in that way. Let me go take a look. And sometimes he comes back and says, you know, I don't think that's the case. 
I don't think that that's what's going to be best for the game or I've looked at it's going to affect people more than just yourself and so we're not going to be able to do that or we had technical limitations or to do that we would have to put these other things on hold and we've just simply made them a priority right now. Um, and so it doesn't mean he always says yes, but he always does say I'm listening and that makes you feel like at least you have some level of control or understanding or acceptance in the game you play as opposed to WoW where you're just along for the ride, kind of.